So I've already talked with you about how user stories aren't what you think they are, and they are actually a technique for requirements by conversation. Let's see how non-functionals might fit into that puzzle. So if you're unfamiliar with non-functionals, it's anything that we need something to do that is not kind of a, the main thing it does. So um, the core functionality of my phone is that it can record videos. A non-functional requirement is that I want them to be saved and usable in um, less than a second where I wanna be able to, to review that video. So that performance expectation is not kind of the core functionality, but it's an expectation I have about how it should work. Traditionally, like when we used to actually have these big templated requirements documents, there was a section for functional requirements and a section for non-functional requirements. And those NFRs, um, number one, would often get ignored and we'd worry about them later and, and always too late, but also we're always seen as this separate thing. So you've got, like, this is what the system should do and this is how it should behave. And it's really hard to talk non-functionals because when you ask a stakeholder, well, how fast should this be? The answer you're gonna get is very fast, instantaneous. And you have to learn how to get good at asking questions about, okay, how much is that worth to you? If we made it instantaneous, it could cost you a million dollars. Is it worth a million dollars? Well, no, like it doesn't have to be instantaneous. Let's, let's talk back to see what are our real needs and expectations. All right, so uh, let's just assume that's enough for us to be on the same page as far as what non-functional attributes are. Let's talk about how they fit into user stories as a technique for requirements by conversation. So we know that the three C's of user stories, the card is that little avatar. Some people use the Connextra format. So it might say, as a iPhone user, I want my phone to record videos so that I can post them on LinkedIn and share with you all. Um, but that's just the, the avatar. That's just the thing that drives us to have a conversation. So what my teams have done in the past and what I really love is using uh, techniques to help us remember non-functionals. So I know definition of ready is not terribly popular with everyone, but I found great use in it as a reminder for the types of conversations we should have as we're refining. So uh, one of the things that was in our definition of ready was this concept called FERPS plus that we've considered non-functionals, including all of the things in FERPS plus. And despite the fact that FERPS plus sounds a little bit like uh, something you'd say if you had too many chili dogs, uh, it's, it's a really useful um, list of types and categories of non-functional requirements that you should at least consider. Talking about non-functionals is part of refinement of an item. So if I have that backlog item I just mentioned, just as much as we're talking about the behaviors and how that should work, we should be talking about the expectations for performance, supportability, etc. Take a look at FERPS Pluses in Wikipedia even. They've got a decent explanation of it. Each one of those letters rep represents different categories of non-functionals. They don't all apply to every item. So there may be a backlog item you're looking at, and as you go through, we might talk about usability and a little bit about supportability, but performance isn't a big deal. It's a batch process. We're not terribly worried about security because that's already handled in kind of the architecture of the system, but it's useful to think about it at least. So every time we refine something, we go, okay, how fast this, does this need to be? Do we care? Um, have we considered how we're going to maintain and support this? Are there any things we need to think about when it comes to uh, security? Is this opening another port of entry into our system that we need to worry about? Do we need to look at um, SLAs and SLOs? Is, uh, does this have a recovery time objective? Is it okay if this doesn't work for a day and we fix it later? Um, how configurable does this need to be? Do we need to make it so that we can adjust it on the fly? All of those questions are asked in the same refinement workshops that we're asking well, what color should it be? And uh, what should the name of this be? And what happens when you click on this button? Functionals and non-functionals are just categories of questions we ask when we're talking about a user story, when we're having that conversation. So much so that the same techniques that we use for understanding functionality, things like specification by example, we use for non-functionals. So we look to see, okay, if this does this, how fast does it return back? If it fails, if we en encounter a failure condition, what does recovery look like? If we're in a failure mode, how does the system function now? All of those questions, it's the same behaviors. It's just a categorization. It's not a different item on the backlog. It's not a separate requirement. It doesn't go in a different document. It doesn't go in a different JIRA item. It's just part of the conversation. 
The only exception to this, I guess there's two exceptions. One is if you have non-functional debt. So if your system really should have had some non-functional requirements or tests or um, it's unstable, for instance, and there's things you need to do to recover, you may end up with things on the backlog that are just about recouping that debt. So we need to make sure that the system now recovers gracefully, that it actually has some kind of a way of, of entering a failure state and coming back from that. Those things might go on there if you're trying to recover debt on their own. But it's a one-time thing, right? So once you reach a stable state, every new item now includes that in there. The other situation might be that you're story splitting. So we, we know when we bring things in, they're often too big to get done in a single sprint. So we're now motivated to split complexity off. Non-functionals can be a form of complexity. So if we're looking at this backlog item and we go, okay, well, we want it to um, load the page in two milliseconds or less. But that is extremely expensive and we think we need to buy a new hardware appliance to make that happen. Why don't we split this? And we have a version that loads in 10 milliseconds or less, and then we'll have another version of this on the backlog that loads in two milliseconds or less that we can actually then build up to. And that way we can test out all the functionality and then deal with a stricter non-functional later. So splitting on non-functionals to trim out complexity might, have, uh, might be a reason why you'll have another version of that on the backlog. But it's not a separate thing. It's just another category. It's another aspect of the work that you're building, no different from anything else. Definition of done, if you're using that technique, is a great place to put uh, cohesive shared non-functionals. So for instance, if every page in your system needs to load in 10 milliseconds or less, you can put that in your DOD. And that is just a reminder to you as developers to make sure that you've automated a test around that and that that test is passing before you can move forward. So all of these kind of things that sound like definitions or contracts really are just reminders. It's part of your working agreement of this is a reminder to have a conversation about non-functionals. This is a reminder to make sure that our automated tests are passing and that we actually have status checks on the other side. But the thing I want you to remember, once again, user stories is a technique for requirement by conversation. Non-functionals is just a category of conversation. It's just one of the topics that we talk about. Don't forget it, but also don't think it's this some scary other thing. It is just an aspect of the item we're trying to deliver.